On this episode, we have your Sherry Rich and Courtesy Move album under the spotlight, released back in 1997 and still sounding amazing. It's one of my all-time favourite albums, and I'm still astounded that more people are not aware of it. It's my hope that via tonight's show, we can turn many new listeners onto this album and indeed some of your other material. Now, the guys who recorded this album with you, Courtesy Move, were in fact Wilco members John Sturat, Jay Bennett and Ken Kuma, who'd formed Courtesy Move, I believe, as an early Wilco side project. If yeah. we can drift back to late 1996, when you flew to the USA to record this album, what was your mindset like? And I, I guess I'm meaning you'd recorded uh, two strong EPs here in Australia, which did okay. But were you confident about what lay ahead? And I'm referring to the songs you had in the works and what the Wilco boys could do with them. Well, I, I remember I had worked for a long time on the songwriting for that album and I'd, I'd culled it down to 15 songs mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I was obviously very excited. It was the first time I'd, I'd been to America um, and I was a huge fan of, of Wilco and, and the work that they had done so I was really psyched to go over there and I think I got there just before Christmas so um, arriving in Nashville with all those houses in the snow and decked out in all the wreaths and the Christmas lights was really, you know, a terrific experience. And um, I guess I was a little bit nervous. I went over by myself. I didn't have a manager or anything with me. And I remember the, the guys saying, wow, you're just you're here by yourself. It's, you know, that's really, that's really something else. Because I guess they just always expect, you know, you've got to have your manager or whatever traveling sure. with you. But I was fairly determined to um, let them have input into the way the songs ended up being because I, I knew that they were professionals and I liked what they'd done before. So I thought, well, I'll just I'll take their lead. I'm not going to go in there and sort of thump the table and say, I want it like this. Yeah. So the, the collaboration with those guys, from memory you gave your publisher a couple of names of bands you'd expressed a desire to work with. He approached Wilco, they liked your album demos and were on board. Was it as simple as that? It was as simple as that. Um, okay. My publisher was American and he was on, on a trip over there and I, I said to him, well, if you you know run into anybody from Wilco, or I gave him a list of bands I liked. And um, another, another band was the Jayhawks, correct? Yes, yes. That would have been an interesting collaboration. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I was a big fan of the Jayhawks as well, and, and as well mm. as Uncle Tupelo. Mm. We kicked off the show tonight with a rollicking album opener, Polite Kisses, written by yourself and Jay Bennett. Great, great way to start the album, by the way. From from memory, it was the second single released too. I really love the piano solo on that song. Was that Jay playing that? Yes, it was. He was such a talent, a, a multi-instrumentalist in every sense of the word. Yeah, he really um, was a, a wild man in the studio and had tons of energy. And I just remember staying up, you know, all all night. He was, I guess, I read that about Keith Richards as well. Just go, go, go until until he dropped. And hmm. um, and yeah, working all through the night. And he really worked tirelessly on on that album. He really threw hmm. himself into it. Okay. Well, next track. Is That All You Wanted? This, from memory, was the first single lifted off the album, and it's great. Nice acoustic guitar intro, nice chorus, and in my opinion, no reason why this shouldn't have climbed the charts. This was written by yourself and Garth Porter, correct? Yeah, mostly by okay. me. <laughs> okay, so you obviously demoed that before you left Australia. Was the finished song what you'd had in mind when you'd originally penned it with Garth Porter? Um, no, I, from memory, I think Garth Porter... Um, he changed it into more of that sort of, he wanted to give it that Dylan-y kind of um, feeling and he wrote the the middle section, the, if I knew then, would I know now? And he mm -hmm. wrote that part, yeah. Sherry, was there ever any talk of having Courtesy Move join you on an Australian tour? Um, no, because they were, they were well and truly, you know, deep in Wilco world and touring a lot in the US and Europe as they, you know, still are, although John Sturat's the only one still in the band. Sure. Um, yeah, so we could never make that happen. We did get together mm. at um, and played, played a few shows at um, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, when the album was released. 
and that was really fun. It was awesome. Yeah, I wish we could have done a, a tour in Australia, but uh, no, didn't pan out. Mm. Okay, next up is the tune Lonely Boy with the borrowed riff from Mr. Tambourine Man. This was written, I assume, whilst you were still in Australia, another Garth Porter collaboration with help from Paul Kelly, correct? Oh, yeah, I guess I, I started it with Garth Porter and mm -hmm. then it just wasn't, it didn't feel like it was anything finished. So I took it to Paul Kelly and um, and he added his input as well. So, yeah. Along with Three Time Loser, we come to my favourite song off the album, Two White Dogs. For the first time in a long time, I feel free. Just Two White Dogs, The Open Road and Me. What a song. Love it. <laughs> love it, love it. Before we play this, can I get you to intro it with a little background info, please? Yeah, well, those two white dogs, Tex and Lester, belong to my brother. Huh. And when I wrote it, I was, um, yeah, kept pretty carefree, single girl, just, uh, I think I was just sort of couch surfing at that time and just had my guitar and, and one trunk of possessions and some clothes and I really did feel like I was free and I think I was about to go to America and yeah I felt like I had the world at my feet and going my way. Sounding superb there that was Sherry Rich and Courtesy Move running through the long lost bad finger tune I'll Be The One. Sherry back in the late 90s you played shows in Nashville, Florida, Toronto, New York, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, also Paris for memory. Does one particular gig stand out? Well, I actually did a whole French tour. Hmm. Yeah, I did a tour all around France with um, with Rick Plant, who's now my husband, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I just remember playing those crazy French cafes with everybody smoking, and it's just like wow. full on <laughs> smoke. You don't get that anymore. Um, I remember playing at a place called Sharky's and it was supposed to be an Australian surf bar and it was like in inland France in the middle of nowhere in the country wow. France. Um, what, what about in the US? Where did you, where did you develop your strongest um, following, do you think? Um, probably in Nashville. That's where I played the most. I didn't really do a lot of touring in the US. I played a couple of really fun shows in, in New York at the, at the bottom line, one New Year's mm -hmm. Eve, Rick and I opened up for Buddy and Julie Miller, and that was a lot of a lot of good times. And I remember playing another bar in New York, which belonged to was run by that producer who produced the Bottle Rockets and a lot of those bands. I can't remember his name okay. now, but, but I remember getting there, and the only lighting, <laughs> the only light, was this naked light bulb like hanging on a on a lead down like sort of wow. right above my head that was the stage nice. lighting and in the middle of the set <laughs> that that blue light bulb wow. popped <laughs> <laughs> we are winding down and the track which we're going to close out with tonight is beautiful talented and dead written after cobain's suicide this version on the album was a reworked version of the tune which originally appeared on your first ep from 1994 correct yes Okay. Well, I think it's one of the most powerful songs which you've written and with lyrics like all that money, all that fame, all those flowers on his grave and also number one with a bullet in the head. You captured the shock which many people felt at that time. Did those lyrics and song structure come quickly to you? Yeah, it really did. I remember writing that in, you know, just a couple of hours in one afternoon and it was yeah, literally just a couple of days after he died and around my right, around my birthday. And yeah, it was one of those songs that just came really quickly and and was the first first of my songs that got a lot of airplay and a lot of recognition in Australia, which was really terrific. That's right. Yeah. Well, finally, off the top of your head, can you name one or two songs which you've written over the years which are your personal standouts? And I'm meaning songs that you are most proud of. Well, I guess Beautiful Towers and Dead is one of them. I really like... Pandora Mink, which is off my latest album. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the songs on the first Grapes record, I think, are personal favourites of mine, ones that I wrote with Ashley Naylor and ones that I wrote by myself. I really like Lovely to Meet You and Marmalade. Well, a lot of those, are, yeah, it, it, we could do a whole... Uh, episode on that album too but personally i think if only you knew from the girl monster days reworked as step inside and included 
on the Grapes album, Western Sun. For me, that is one of your very best 